One of the most common comments and questions that we get when we ask people what they want to see here, we just did the Q&A and something that a lot of people said is, hey, I like your videos, but I often don't understand a lot of what's going on. We need more introductory topics. I need you to teach me from the beginning. And I got to be honest, I have no idea how to do that. We talked about it. How do you create some sort of holistic tech curriculum? I don't know. So we want to hear from you what topics like that do you want to hear from and we did get one amazing comment who suggested a name which i love level 099 techs so videos to get you up to the point where you can enjoy all the other videos so let us know what you think would be a great idea for that kind of thing and in that i in the vein of that i would say if you don't have any other idea of what your first step should be your first step should be build a computer from cheap parts from scratch, figure out how to do that. Put Linux on that computer and figure out how to learn that. Those are two solid first steps. And toward that, we're gonna sort of kick this off with some videos that have to do with bash tips. And the first one we're gonna talk about is the directory stack. The directory stack is a stack and a stack is an important idea in computer science. And one thing about the stack is what kind of stack is it? Now the directory stack is sort of a traditional first in last out stack. Philo, Philo, what do you say, Wendell? Philo. Philo, I don't know if that's canon or not, but I'd say I would go with that as well. Now a Philo stack means that the first thing that you put in it is the last thing to come out. If you're having a hard time visualizing that, you've probably seen a Pez dispenser. The first candy, you got a little spring-loaded thing here, the first candy goes to the bottom, and then as you pop out your delicious sugar cubes, the last one to come out is the first one that went in. And that's what we're dealing with with the directory stack. The other kind of stack is a first in, first out stack, which is something like, uh, let's say a grain silo, where the first grain that goes in, because you're unloading from the bottom, is the first grain to come out. Let's take a look at the Linux directory stack. The first command we will talk about in terms of the directory stack is push D. We'll talk about this first because this is how you build your stack. This is how you add things to the stack. And it's real simple to use. In effect, you basically, the most basic use case here is you replace the CD command with the push D command. So let's travel to uh, a deep directory. Pretty painless with tab complete, but it's long and annoying, and it's like that on purpose. So here we are, we can print the working directory, and there is the full path to this place where we are. Now let's say here I am, and uh, let's say I, maybe I'm working on a project here, and I need to go and I need to check on some kind of setting that I'm, you know, some service that I'm working with uh, with on this project. Let's say I need to go and look at my Python settings for whatever reason. So I could change my directory and go to where I need to look at it and then come back here. And then you got to type all this back in again. So instead of doing that, instead of CD, we will push D. And what we got? 3.7. We'll head over to the Python directory. We're going to check some things. Let's pretend we are. And the output that you see here is actually the contents of the directory stack. Uh, unfortunately, by default, it shows them inline, not very readable. So let's really quickly just take a look at the next command, which is DIRS, DIRS, directory stack. I'm not sure how best to say that, but DIRS, we'll go with that. So if you run DRS, you'll get the output that you just had right up there. Well, this is one of those commands, kind of like LS, where you'll get to the point where you never run it without at least one modifier, which is dash V, which gives you a vertical list and it indexes it. So you can see uh, one of the conceits of the directory stack is that the zero position is always the current working directory. So just keep that in mind, that zero position is where you are now, and it's not what you're going to take off of the stack. 
But as you can see, the really long directory name is now in position one in my directory stack. So let's just go ahead and go full circle with the most basic example. I'm in my Python folder. I've figured out what I need to figure out. I've looked at my settings. Now it's time to head back to my project folder, which was this really long directory. And it's as simple as pop D, pop directory. This is the last command in the directory stack. And once we give it that, boom, here we are back in the long directory. And as you can see at the top there, let's go ahead and run with the modifier. So you can see it. We only have the zero element, which again is always the current working directory. And we are back where we were. So you can imagine when you replace CD with push D, you create the opportunity to move around the directory tree much faster and much more efficiently. It's pretty straightforward just replacing the CD command with push D. Anytime that you are in a directory that you want to quickly return to later in your session, you replace CD with push D. Now that's pretty basic. But when you start using push D a lot, you're going to develop a pretty big stack and you need to know how to deal with things in that stack. And you might want to go to a place in the stack that isn't the one that's ready to be popped off. So I've built a little stack here. Let's take a look at it. Remember the, the dash V command is going to give us the vertical list with an index. And so you can see all of these home directories that I've put in to my directory stack. Now let's say that I want to go to videos. Well, if I pop, I'm going to pop downloads. I would have to pop all the way through my stack to get to videos. And that's where we can use the index to move around the directory stack without popping everything off. And we actually use the push D command for that. Now the push D command, we can use a plus N and a minus N. And when I say N, N is the, the index here. So if I do plus N, so let's do a plus two. This is going to directly correlate to the numbers that you see on the left there. So this is going to take the index that I give it and it's going to rotate the stack so that that index is in the zero position, which if you'll remember, makes that our current working directory. So in essence, what I'm doing here is I'm moving to the templates directory, but that's not the only thing I'm doing. I'm also rotating the stack, which means that as templates is pulled up, everything under it is also pulled up and everything above it gets moved to the bottom of the stack. So let's take a look at that here. Here I am, I'm in the templates folder and let's get one of these that we can actually read. So you can see what was the zero element has been pulled down into the fourth element because it's right, because videos was at the bottom before. And then downloads, which was above templates, has been push, rotated, is the, the correct term there, to the fifth uh, element here. So the stack remains as it was in terms of the elements in it, the directories in it, it's just reordered because I've rotated it based on the index. Now I used a positive integer there. I can just as easily use a negative integer and it's the same thing except now the numbers don't correlate because we're counting from the bottom. So if I give it a negative zero, then downloads is going to be moved into my current working directory and everything else is gonna be rotated. And that is how you can manipulate your stack using push D. In terms of managing our stack, we might also want to simply remove things from the stack. And uh, when we use push D, we rotate the stack. So we end up with the same number of items to actually remove things from the stack. Uh, we're gonna wanna go back to the pop D command. We're gonna use it in a, almost the exact same way as push D with the, the index offsets. So for example, looking at my stack here, if I wanted to remove public, then I could simply pop D plus three. Again, the plus means we're counting from zero from top down or left to right, if you're looking at it in the inline view. And we're saying, go ahead and pop off that third instance. And notice we did not change directories there. But when we look at our stack again, now we only have four elements instead of five and public is gone. And similarly to push D, this also takes negative. And if we give it negative zero, then that's going to be uh, the third element actually, the 
counting from zero from the bottom and sure enough run that and we lose the downloads so if you want to clean up your directory stack then you can use pop d with the offsets to get rid of items and this does not affect your current working directory like the push d command does and it doesn't rotate the stack like the push d command does it simply removes things that's pretty much all there is to the directory stack it's uh, pretty basic to use. Now there are uh, a couple of other command modifiers that I will leave you to discover on your own. The last one that I will talk about is the last one that I consider to be really useful for most cases. And that's uh, the Deer's command. One way to immediately just wipe out your stack. Let's say you've built up a giant stack or you went crazy and you, you changed your bash RC to replace CD with push D and now you have a giant directory stack. And you can just pass that dash C and clear the stack. And you see we didn't get any output there because it's empty. Clear stack. So that's pretty much it. You can start using this immediately. And I think if you spend a lot of time in the command line moving around directories, it's really going to make your life better. But let's go ahead and talk about, you know, even though we're trying to do this as a beginner friendly thing, let's talk about a more advanced use case. Now let's say that uh, you know, you're working on individual systems and one system that you work on, you know which directories you're going to be in. You know that you're going to be moving around a bunch of different directories. Maybe you're working on a project and you're moving between files and stuff like that. You're doing it all from the command line. One power user way of dealing with uh, the directory stack is to use your bash RC file. So let's take a look. at my bash RC file and here at the bottom I've just thrown in some push D commands so that when I log in I'm actually going to get a stack built for this user every time this user logs in so let's just log in and take a look at what happens here we are and as you can see there is some uh, some output from those commands that just ran and if we look at our directory stack, of course, there it is. So I could have uh, sort of a, a built-in set of hot directories that I know that I'm going to use every time. And they're right there for me. And if I want to jump to, you know, the desktop folder. Now, of course, we would imagine that the desktop folder is a giant 50-tab directory destination. And this is really going to save us some time if we can just say push D plus 3. And there I am in the desktop directory with my rotated stack. Everything is still there. And if I wanted to go someplace else, use push D here, push desktop back onto the stack, and I can keep going, moving around my directories faster than ever before. So now that you understand the directory stack, you should be able to move through that Linux command line way faster than you ever could before maybe even impress some people with that knowledge. And remember, please in the comments, tell us what topics you think would be great topics for these kinds of videos that maybe the questions that you didn't ever want to ask anybody, maybe the introductory low level stuff that you feel like everybody's talking about, but you don't understand. Let us know and maybe we can help you out with that.